It's October the 7th, 2016. I'm Dana Durnford, your host. The nuclearproctologist.org. And we got a stream in this Friday to the Garter counter playing games with me again. Disappeared in the corner as we zoomed in. And that's okay, too. And so we got supercell storms happening all over this planet. And tonight, uh, I think, is a really good stream we got put together for everybody. Just make sure I catch that. Oh, I did have the music playing. Good. And so tonight, we are going to go down that rabbit hole of Japan's radiation and its effect up on the Pacific Ocean and um, influences on supercell storms like uh, Morani, in China and Taiwan and the Philippines at 230 miles per hour. We're gonna show you some of this documentation coming up. And I hope everybody's good. I know it's been chaos for the last week. And I must be zoomed in, am I? Okay. See, Danny gets something right sometimes even though he's not even on. <laughs> conversation. Hi, I'm Thirst. Hi, Debbie. And Albert. Jan Brooks is here. Miss Milky the Clown one who doesn't stop. And thank you for all the work last week, Jan. I know that was a stupid amount of work to get those videos and Lonnie and other interviews that you put up. I know how this is not a good time for you, so Elaine is moderating uh, and Elaine had to bail out of Florida and find a hotel, and rightfully so. We're going to cover a whole lot of stuff tonight. We have a, an extinction event playing out in the Pacific Ocean. Hi, everybody. And Starlight was there earlier, probably back. Answers, Albert. Hi, everybody. There you go. That's what I was expecting. And uh, 51. I got no idea how to pronounce, 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 pronounce. I made up a word again. Wow, two words. I don't have an idea how to pronounce names. I thought you were on the screen when I was doing it, so it doesn't matter. First off, look up in your top left-hand corner. You see Fukushima fake versus real reactor four posted 15 hours. was a, It was stuck on 198 when I checked at 11 hours. And then 15 hours, I had took a screen capture. Okay, I suppose I have that other one up when I'm doing this. Okay, so 15 hours, see the one up in the top corner? Now watch this. 17 hours, I only got 185 views. The numbers went backwards, right? 198 at 15 to 185, so... That's um, really shocking. Now, this has happened several times. It was stuck at 195. It got 100. Uh, it was slow, climbing up for some reason. You got to realize, as you see above me, 20,000 subscribers heavily censored this last couple of weeks. Uh, millions of lives at risk. The super typhoon Chaba is 375 kilometers per hour. Uh, 375 kilometers an hour. That's 233 miles per hour. That's not the normal one I would have grabbed, but it, it done, right? Normally, I would have used a calculator for the... 307, that's going on right now in South Korea, headed to Japan. A week and a half ago, Typhoon Maranti gust at 230 miles per hour. It was actually blowing up to about 260 and gust that is unbelievable in every shape and form we have hurricane matthews it didn't follow any of uh, the models and max sustain wind was 140 they don't bother mentioning gusts even though they kind of do and gust will be an extra 40 miles an hour and haiti and jamaica florida america China, 
with Maranti. These are these numbers are just completely, completely like most frightening numbers imaginable with these things hitting land. This is the video. Get rid of me. This is the video that I was just talking about, uh, uh, Unit 4, where the numbers went backwards. It's two and a half minutes long. I'm going to play it for you. Here we go. It's October the 6th, uh, 2016. I'm Dana Durnford, your host, nuclear proctologist. And we're putting out a special presentation for the Rinse Network viewers at jeffrinsrinse.com. And if you scroll down the page on the right hand side, what you'll see is Dana Dern for just in the Fukushima third oil down. And you can link directly over to my site. So I hope you'll use Jeff Rince's site and you can keep your eye on that little corner for these short videos, particularly for Jeff Rince. And what we're going to talk about tonight, this is the real Unit 4 in Japan's reactors. And this is the fake Unit 4. And what you're going to see tonight is uh, several journalists saying, claiming, while they're inside of that uh, picture you're looking at there, that they're inside of the building on the right-hand side. ...of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of... 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor into a safer location. It is to see it firsthand, okay. we had to suit up. <laughs> the long-term solution here is to remove and secure the nuclear fuel. At Unit 4, they have begun that process. This reactor was shut down for maintenance when the tsunami hit, but not a single... And, uh... Fukushima Daiichi stage, no, right after the accident, uh, it was, of course, the uh, emergency condition. But uh, right now, uh, gradually, gradually, uh, it became the uh, decommissioning stage, a more stable decommissioning stage. And that's that, the, as I mentioned, uh, the successful uh, completion of the uh, uh, dismantle of the uh, spent fuel from the Unit 4. Uh, uh. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011, leading to the country's worst nuclear disaster. Nuclear energy. Thanks for watching. I'm Miles O'Brien. So they were all faking that reactor. Those people on the right-hand side, they were actually faking being in a building that didn't exist, right? Like I showed you. That alone should worry you. That alone should scare you that the media faked being inside of those buildings. Why would they do something like that? How could you ever trust them again, yeah? Now, this next clip is um, Hurricane Matthews' effects upon Haiti. And my, oh, my. Wait till you listen to this. Devastation stretches for miles across Haiti's southwestern coastline. More than 800 are dead after Hurricane Matthew and its 145 mile per hour winds tore the roofs off homes, smashed concrete walls, and caused massive flooding. The United Nations says more than 4 million children could be impacted by the Category 4 storm, while health officials warn that an ongoing cholera outbreak could become even worse. With many of the country's bridges destroyed, entire towns are cut off from emergency responders, meaning that many Haitians will be unable to receive clean drinking water. The government now estimates 350,000 people will need some kind of assistance. And with the nation still in the midst of rebuilding from a horrific earthquake in 2010, Haiti will once again have to find a way to recover from this latest tragedy. Yet another enormous humanitarian challenge for a country that has lived through far too many. Yeah, and that is like insanity. 800 people dead so far. They haven't made it to any of the towns. That was just a report that came out that they've got 800 dead. So once again, you hear them say 145 miles per hour, but they don't bother talking about the gust. 
And does wind just blow sustain? No, it gusts. It gusts. It, and sometimes it gusts for long extended periods, like minutes. But it gusts, right? And that is one of the most important things you would talk about when you're talking about these hurricanes but was missing in all the, all the narratives. So you're looking at winds 200 miles per hour gust tops, say, or even more. They're, like when they say category four, it has to go up a long way before it hits category five. So it's anywhere in that window, they'll call it 145. But these were high numbers. These were higher than 145. Okay. Now the next one is ongoing right now as we talk. 233 miles per hour gust and steady winds rather and gusting probably 300 miles per hour. And they moved everybody away for all of these storms. That's why you don't see the big death toll except for Haiti. They were left to die. They were thrown away like paper towels. Okay, here comes the next clip on a Typhoon Chaba. This is, this is a storm surge. Don't blink for the first bit. Watch your bottom center. Top center. So that was just one short video. Um, now, that place had thousands of cars washed away, uh, thousands of homes completely destroyed, businesses. It, uh, this whole area was getting gutted by 230-mile-an-hour gust, at least, if not uh, sustained winds. And at one point, it's recorded uh, sustained at 233 miles per hour. That on its own is the most frightening. Now, this next one is Marani, Maranti, which hit China. And there's estimates of a half a billion trees completely limbed in just one area, not this area, but another area. So this is one of the few spots um, that I'm playing in the Fuji province. Well, this is the city of Xiamen, the commercial hub of Fujian province, but today so much of it looks like this. Testament to the force of Typhoon Maranti, which swept in across the Straits of Taiwan during the early hours of Thursday morning, packing winds of more than 300 kilometers an hour. Now, state media has described it as the biggest storm of all anywhere in the world this year. At the moment, more than a million people are still without electricity. Plane services have been disrupted, train services have been cancelled, and there remains the real risk of mudslides. There have been some truly surreal sights. This is a giant moon ball, because this is the start of the mid-autumn festival here in China, a three-day holiday. It's one of the reasons why businesses and schools are closed. And this ball has been bouncing in and around Fuzhou City, a truly unbelievable sight and something that people are talking about on social media here in China. Now yeah, I bet. Okay, so just a recap. Um, 375 kilometers per hour is 233 miles per hour. Uh, Typhoon Maranti, when it was hitting this one spot, they said 190 mile per hour sustained and 230 mile per hour a gust. This is actually, it was 230 mile per hour sustained on those islands on the outside. See, all of these videos, pictures, stories are only about one little city. When you look at the big picture, now this was going around, still is certainly. 
and kind of reminds you of a skull. Who knows if they fudged it? Now, there's talks of these storms being directed um, by what might be directed energy weapons. And we know that directed energy weapons exist. They've been using them for 50 years. I'm not saying that's what happened, but there is evidence showing up that there might have been um, attempts to slow it down. That might even be true. Who knows? Uh, when it was coming into Miami and Florida. Now, remember off that coastline, you're looking at there's 55,000 barrels dumped in uh, about 30 feet of water. And these barrels are full of uh, high-level nuclear waste. Along the coastline, there's all kinds of nuclear power plants, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and I just made sure I get that out there. Now, Dana, how does that uh, radiation from Japan, like the headline on the video, become an influence upon these storms, Dana? Okay, bear with me. I'm almost there. Hang on. I just got to do some fancy switcheroo. -y. We're over to that, Windows. Uh, okay, now this is, you can see Hawaii is that, uh, square box in the middle. <laughs> anyway, keep your, remember that when you're looking at maps like that. But so this is your ocean currents. Uh, Japan will come across in about 45 days on the Kuroshia current, which is you won't see me because I got this. But it's up up by uh, above Hawaii, up their convergence zone. That arrow coming to North America. And then it burns to the North Pacific and Alaska, bearings and everything else. Okay. This model is based upon just the 137 from a single reactor in Japan. We're going to come back and look at those reactors in a bit. Now, the releases from the reactors were only based upon, and these models we're going to look at are based upon single the releases over a couple of days from a single reactor are not based upon the actual inventories. And these were studies. This was a study. And this is NOAA. This is a link. Is a, you see the link up there for the, the actual. And so NOAA shows the same thing, but they're not using all um, the isotopes from the radiation. Now, but what you're looking at, is radiation all the way to the ocean floor to the surface. And it's like a snowstorm in the ocean. Now it's pulsing all the time. And what that's done over the last couple of years is heat the ocean up dramatically. Now it also falls into the ocean. Now you'll see, in, this is over a 40 day, this is Noah's model. This is based upon a 40 day dispersal in the atmosphere. And so you see it's constantly coming out of Japan up in the corner, the red and the yellow and on the corner. That's Japan. It's kind of still coming out. See that? It doesn't stop coming out. It spans the entire Pacific Atlantic, Northern Hemisphere. We're almost up to 40 days at this. No, we're about 20-something days in. We're at the 29th, 30th. And the countdown closest to me over here is ours. The numbers and then... The middle one, zero three, is the dates. And the 2011, fourth month, the fifth day, sixth day. We're almost through the model. This is over 40 day dispersal. So this is an electrically charged atmosphere. Now, this is energy. That a gram of this is a million watts. I got that on, sorry. So a gram was a million watts. So not only was it dispersed heavily throughout the ocean itself, it continued to fall out of the atmosphere into the ocean. There's many models, but they're only based upon a couple of days releases from a single isotope, and they're based over a long period. They're not based upon the actual fallout from the atmosphere. They're based on these models of the ocean are based upon the stuff that's going on or that they're spraying water over a fissionable product. And this is what the ocean looked like in 10 years in that model. 
It's constantly hemming out. Once again, look at your model where it's coming out of Japan. It doesn't stop coming out. See that? This is almost six years. It's still doing that. But the original detonations, explosions, and releases would have been much higher than now. Of course, like you have to be stupid not to understand that part. This is what science likes to say. But it's not as much now as there was originally. No, it's still coming out like this because the chain reaction is burning at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. So in Japan, right away, uh, we've seen 36%. Now, normally it's three in a million children have thyroid issues. Now, 13,600, not out of a million, but out of 40,000, have serious issues with the thyroid. Your thyroids and cancers are the last things to show up. Thyroids will show up fairly quick because they're... Uh, a gland they're not an organ or they're not a muscle or your bones even though that will show up quick and it sequesters in your muscles your organs and your bones when you eat it drink it breathe it. and we're doing that in north america now you see this one here is coming out of japan is not stopped coming out of japan i'll start it again it's now hitting north america it's covered all the pacific all in north america most of the atlantic and close to me, European countries. So there was no way you couldn't breathe it in. There's no way you couldn't eat it. There was no way you couldn't drink it. There's no way you couldn't cook your food in it. There was no way you couldn't get a bath or a shower in it. There was no way you can drive around in it. No way you can walk out your door and not get it on you. But it's invisible. You can't see it or smell it or taste it or hear it or feel it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. And that you can put two million on, uh, atoms on the head of a needle, you can't see it. But a single atom will get you in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years with a cancer. But before that, there's 1,800 diseases, autoimmune deficiencies, illnesses, injuries that will show up. There's another model. That's Japan by me. See how it doesn't stop coming out. It's going to go behind me and come out over on the other side. But it doesn't stop coming out. See that? Now, that is ongoing. The original plume was massive uh, quantities. But because it's in a chain reaction, it's cannibalizing rocks and steel and rebar and gravel and cement and the water itself. All of that comes in contact with fissional products at temperatures you can't even conceive and becomes like a fog, like a mist, like... Now, the cigarette I'm smoking doesn't have 7,000 chemicals. Hang on. But that goes up and disappears. No, it doesn't. Those particles are floating around. But they're not charged. They're not pumping out energy. They're, they don't have a million watts per gram. A million watts. You can plug everybody's house on your street into a gram and run them for an extended period, for up to nine months. You know what I'm saying? This is enormous, incredible, stupid, inconceivable amount of energy. This is why we have terrorist laws and nuclear waste sites. Now, that plume, if it was just a single plume, if it had stopped after the first day and kept coming around the world and circling the planet every 40 days or so, it would be devastating, absolutely devastating. Now, data showed a large spike in deaths, particularly infant uh, mortality, in the 14-week study. Not, not that it stopped, but they, they'd done a study over 14 weeks. And then you can see here by me, 22,000 Americans that died from heart attacks and abnormality. And the reason being is, as you can see from these models, that's Japan right alongside of me. That's North America in the far to the left, way over to the left of me, getting pounded. Now, the models are only XE-133. So the models, the reactors run on plutonium uranium. So what they're doing is showing you tracers, inhaling just one radioactive particle. And all the particles out of Japan were brutally hot particles. The end is near, is right. For the world from Japan, sorry. And there's an amazing amount of good people in Japan. 
Uh, these people were, I wasn't going to click that, but I did. These people were arrested for being terrorists. They were set up and then released. Now, Judge Catherine, Justice Catherine Bruce, Supreme Court Justice, and people know I blogged about this, uh, and some of them were obvious blogs, but over the next week I had done more blogs about it. And one of the statements I had made, we have enough terrorism without the police creating more fake ones, without police creating fake terrorism. That is the exact sentence that Justice Catherine Bruce used in her descending opinion and releasing them. My, that was my sentence verbatim too. So, so here's what you call a crank. Here's what you're looking at is called a madman. And this was Wade Allison. Uh, he's retired. He's a notorious nut job. Nuclear scientist telling you it's like a banana. It's like walking in sunshine. It's like getting on an airplane. The industry is completely full of these people. These are the most batshit crazy people imaginable. Dangerous high levels. If you got it, you're done. You're dead person walking. Man, child, woman. Those children with the thyroid. Not three in a million, 13,646 out of 40,000. That number is like, like if you're a medical, non honest medical professional who understands this stuff, it's enough to leave you just totally despondent. Uh, okay, nuclear fallout. People should stay home. So the government in Taiwan told people, take off your clothing, cleanse the nuclear contaminant the best you can. They warned them. They kept them at a school when the plume came through. North America, they, um, they demonized anybody who said anything about it. Our government had totally turned their backs on, uh, on us. This is Unit 1. This is six reactor cores. Now, the model looks like this. You see, at the top of the building, the pools, there's five reactor cores, minimum in that. And then the centerpiece is the reactor. It's the top of the building where the pools are too. And that's the very top of the building. You can see the enormous amount of heat. This is number two. Why this stayed intact, it's actually all gone. These murons, the muon device, well, uh, it confirmed that it was all gone at a number two. And then we have the heat signature straight above me showed a total meltdown. Now, this is unit three. When you look at the model, unit three, this is unit three again, completely gone. Six reactor cores, totally gone. One, three of those reactors, the cores were uh, producing electricity. This is the, literally the worst thing imaginable at full tilt, full speed. Remember Chernobyl, they had turned it back. It ran away, right? This is Unit 4. That was the video you watched earlier. This is the one that's censored right now on the internet about uh, this building. This is the picture I was using, using to show how the government or the journalists had faked being inside the building. So once again, look at this building. Look, See that bulb in the center at the top? That's the top of the reactor. Look in that building there. You see where the bulb is too? Let me bring up that other screen. I got no idea what I got done. Hang on. I do know what I got done. I just don't know what I got done. There we go. Now I can zoom in. See the bulb in the top right-hand corner, the very top right-hand corner? Well, that bulb is supposed to be up there. Now, for comparison, I'm going to show you the sliding models. So this is unit one uh, with a really good depiction of sizes and everything else. And it's a rudimentary way of doing things, but I slide them together to try to get the context of the building. And so it's off a little bit, but this is unit three, completely gone. The reactor cores, the fuel pools, the reactors are all gone. Dane. A lot of that went in the Pacific. They're pouring water over perpetually and will for tens of thousands of years. They can't contain it as fissionable product. This, see, we have terrorist laws, so this doesn't get loose in our environment. We have nuclear holding sites. 
Now, this is Unit 4, the one the journalist says they're inside. The one on the left is the same as the one on the right. And the yellow bulb is supposed to be top center, not on the second story to, to the right of it. This is catastrophic. These are multiple meltdowns in each building. Not only that, the tsunami washed away common spent fuel pools along the coastline for 400 kilometers. And remember, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. That's five uh, lanes of traffic right around the planet. I'm just going to come down and show you the model where all the people died along the coastline because the tsunami. Now, that same spot would have had fuel pools, storage sites, common spent pools with uh, dozens and dozens of reactors in each area. That came through, and that's why the red numbers were where people were killed by this, and the yellow numbers were people who were missing that they didn't find among that, and that would have probably got washed out to sea. Some got found, but that's got wrenching as it gets. Think about this country, what happened to it? Look at any enormity. You can't get power into the building, and even if you did get power magically into the reactors, there is nowhere to hook at all. You can't hook power up to something like that. Now, if you're in the building, you're dead in less than a minute. You're dead in a minute. If you go and stand alongside of it, you're dead in a minute. The fuel rods are everywhere. So only the homeless, the destitute, dressed up in TEPCO suits, go near it. Now, the power plants are located in the same spot where the tsunami uh, ripped the country apart, yeah? So look at where the power plants are here. Now, that's the same spot you're looking in there a little bit more zoomed in where all the people died in 400 kilometers. Same spot where they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. Now, what I done was done the whole coastline of British Columbia, Canada, over 260 days, 15,000 miles. And instead of being magic like this, every millimeter, jostling with life. That's not what I found at all. Dana, go ahead and show us what you found. I will. Give me a minute. I'm just not as quick as you guys. So that is a depiction of the coastline of Canada. This is the boat we used up to five months without coming home. That's the little zodiac I used to go up on the beaches with. And these pictures coming up are, this is pre-Fukushima and over there is post-Fukushima. This is what a pre-Fukushima Canadian coastline. This is Canada's coastline. This is Canada's, this is emblematic of the entire coastline. This is what you expect to see wherever you go. And now when you go, of course, it's, it's barely, there's barely a handful of species. So it should be Amazing diversity, incredible, in inconceivable. Instead, we're right up on the beach. Is a low, low tide, and it's shocking. So when you look at the beach, uh, you can't go there and eat something. It doesn't exist. The whole shoreline uh, has no color whatsoever. Yet every millimeter is supposed to be jostling, just thriving, just incredible, inconceivable colors. No matter where you go, it's the entire coast of BC. Particularly, this is very emblematic of the British Columbia coastline. This is also very emblematic. This is just normal at low tide. This is any, no matter where you go on the coast of Canada. I have 14,000 hours underwater in boat oceans. And I know uh, I worked at boat, all industries and boat oceans. I have a unique perspective, and I also studied nuclear, 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 that's a new word. Dana made up two new words in one stream. Pretty darn good, you ask me. But this is what it should look like. Amazing, yeah? That's what rocks are supposed to look like. And just at the low toy zone, this is what you would expect. This is what you're familiar with. And so you see the, the sea urchins. Why would you bring a Zodiac anywhere into your shoreline when you know this is what it's supposed to look like? 
So, like, normally I could never do that. I would have to find a perfect spot, get out and walk in and be careful that I didn't sit the boat on a sea urchin because it would pop a bunch of holes in it. And then Dana stuck, sucking on his thumb, wondering, what the freak just happened, man? So what, what, what I'm trying to say to you is we're talking about the death of the Pacific Ocean from Fukushima. And because of that, it, and I'm not trying to, uh, we went out and done the whole coastline. This is confirmed. We have an extinction event. There was nothing left on turn. And we, we were on all the beaches. That documentation is up at the nuclear proctologist.org of the expeditions. It's free for everybody. Okay, let's come back over. Hi to everybody. Lawrence, CJ, Thomas Ackerman. You'll find links to a lot of people below my videos. William Hooper, right. And Rad Chick is okay. No, she's really not doing good, William. I was talking to her for almost well, 45 minutes last week. Or just the end of the week before, rather. And she's been to hell. She's been to hell. This lady, uh, Christina Consolo, has been devastated. No one knows what the frig it is either. It's terrifying. You got any idea how healthy that lady was? You got any idea of how thoughtful she was about the things she put, she ate and stuff like that? Like, it's incredible. Hi, everybody. Answers, Paul. Thomas. Yeah, and Starlight, nuclear proctologist. And so we got a full ad uh, in Powell River newspaper. Uh, I'm sorry, quarter page ad, one quarter of a page. Come back over to that one. Too many Dana, Dana. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a shorter stream tonight. So basically, the Pacific Ocean is heating up. We lost the glaciers here in British Columbia and the Rocky Mountains. They're gone, so we don't have that cool water cooling the estuaries, the rivers the lakes, the streams, and the coastline. And it's going to take 5,000 to 50,000 million years for the glacier to come back. Nobody in the media and in the climate uh, world is talking about it because they know it's from the Fukushima radiation, the isotopes. There was so much of it, like the models I was showing you earlier. The clouds would come in and hit the, the top of the mountains and they would have a big payload and it, and it would be turn to snow or rain, fall out, and then the cloud would rise up and go over the mountain, still releasing its payloads that it took from across the Pacific Ocean. It takes about 45 days for the ocean current to get here, but it only takes three to four days for the jet streams to conquer North America. It's not like it stopped coming out of Japan. So the Pacific Ocean, for the most of it, has, has risen by seven or eight degrees. Now, remember what... Uh, scumbags, client scientists were saying, these are scumbags because uh, they're pro-nuclear and they know it's evil. They know it's wrong. They know it's hideous. They know every animal in every study for 70 years has died. There's no other way to describe them. Even though I'm not really allowed to say language like that anymore, you can, but I can. I'm censored for the rest of my life, however long they decide to let me live. Lord knows they tried to kill me enough times. He was like, Danny, you're, you're crazy. No one's trying to kill you. <laughs> you don't know nuclear. <laughs> you don't know jack shit if you think that way. You know jack. No offense. I'm not trying to offend anybody. No, I, even though I know that's impossible. <clears throat> My cigarettes don't have 7,000 chemicals. I know the trigger is to reject me because I'm smoking a cigarette, but I don't care. That's your loss, not mine. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's talk about a few things. Uh, we burnt over 500 in advertisement, 430 just for a quarter page ad. And you can find that over at the Jeff Rince uh, website, that ad that's going in the newspaper on Wednesday. 
and that the lecture is on Friday. And the hall rental and equipment, the projector rental and sound system rental. I'll be bringing my equipment and recording everything. I need to raise for another little while, another week or two more money. And then I should be self-sustaining. We got to hire security for that one. And because we want to have a conversation. We want to, we've been out delivering flyers the last two days. And uh, the company, I paid for it this morning. I'm moving uh, the fingerprints and the next court case down to this courtroom. And so I'm burnt. I need $500 on Tuesday for that one. Uh, the appeal, I'm going, I'm, I'm don't know what to do. I can't do everything. And that, that was the most important thing to get done. And that's the one that looks like I'm never going to get done because I couldn't raise enough and I had to make a decision. We needed the company in order to get the DVD legal and legitimate with all everything we've done, 260 days, 15,000 miles. We had to move court cases down here anyway. Hi, Roger, I'm almost finished. Yeah, I need about 10 minutes away. And so the quarter paper ad is all paid for. And uh, you'll find that, like I say, at the Jeff Rince's website. And the third, um, third box is down on the right-hand side. You would have seen it earlier in this video when I was doing that two and a half minute one that's censored. Numbers actually went back, right? We screen captured and we showed you that earlier. And I asked everybody to, to bear with me for another two weeks to help me through this for the next two weeks. We're going to have to card, contact an expensive lawyer on Monday. I got to see the other lawyer on Tuesday to finalize all uh, the company. Um, and then we got the lecture on Friday. We want to do another lecture right behind that. I'm hoping on Friday that donation-wise will pay for itself and the expenses. And then the next one um, will be the takeoff one for me, will get me the, the support I need. The ad in the paper is stunning. The before and after pictures are really going to, there's a lot of farmers in the community. Roger's like shocked that we got it in the paper. They got it. They were totally, unbelievably courteous. And um, like, you know, I was looking them all in the eye and every one of them had this kind of, uh, I don't know if I used the word, but a compassion with me to help me get through and get the ad out. There was no connotations of anything else. And so if you can win over your, your local media, you'll win over that community for sure. And so that's a quarter page ad, not in the classifieds, but in the actual paper. And so this town got 25,000 people. That's the only paper. Very excited. We've been delivering flyers uh, that are laminated and everything else. I've done everything imaginable. Plus, I got everything else on my shoulder constantly. It's nonstop what I got on my shoulder, but I don't care. It's irrelevant. I'm game on the whole time. And so we'll end the stream. We'll wind it down. We'll come over and say hi to everybody. I just wanted to make sure everybody got um, that much of it so we know what's going on. I'll zoom back out. Otherwise, we won't be able to say goodnight to everybody. Hugs for Lawrence, Sam Thirst. You can donate under my video to uh, Nuclear Proctologist with your credit cards. Direct link to PayPal. I need at least another week or two weeks help up to the advertisement you ran. I will, yeah, no, it won't go in the paper and it'll be go on online too, but it won't be there until Wednesday of next week. And I had to go for it. And, but, that paper won't disappear, right? It'll be floating around here for weeks in people's houses. And it'll be online too. Yeah, I paid for online too. Yeah. I'm literally broke, but I'm so happy we got this up and running and moving and everything organized. But I do need help for another little tiny bit. It's just, um, I hate the thought of asking anymore because everybody, everybody, I know, has done what they could. And we've done it 
together. That there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And that I'm going to do my part. Trust me. I'm going to take all the heat. I'll take all the beating. I'll take all the abuse. I'll take getting arrested repeatedly. I'll take the humiliations. I'll take the threats. I'll take the intimidations. I'll take the sabotage gladly, willingly, if you give me the opportunity. And I'll take it much further. Trust me. And there is no turning back. There is no stopping us. We are the winning team. And just be proud of that. Because we are righteous. We are morally on the path uh, to being humans. And that we have done everything to, to please everybody out there to try to get them to really appreciate the danger and the urgency that this is. The storms probably won't do it for anybody right yet, but over the next couple of days when the true numbers come out, the true damage comes out from all the, the storms like Moranti in China, like Chaba going on right now in South Korea headed to Japan. These winds, 230 mile an hour winds are just, we got to do moral things from here on out. We can't play this bury our heads in the sand and hope it goes away because it won't. And we know that. Hugs for everybody. Hugs, my friends. Links below. you find Thomas Ackerman's videos, Jan Brooks, Miss Milky the Clown, and so many other. Rad Chick is down below, Christina Consolo, Lorraine Moret. There's all kinds of it to help you. It's not just me. It's us, right? Hugs, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll get another stream out tomorrow. Uh, it's just been such a busy week. I couldn't keep up with it. So we'll see you then. Hugs for Dane. Hugs for everybody. Dana loves you. Don't forget that. Take care, folks.